In this video we're going to look at some more important concepts that we need to think about to try and understand statistical associating fluid theory. So the concepts that we're going to look at in this video are London dispersion forces, Pauli repulsion and then some potential models that help us understand and, and think about the attraction and repulsion between the segments that are involved in, in SAFT theory. So London dispersion forces are intermolecular forces that occur between atoms and nonpolar molecules as a result of the motion of the electrons. So if we take this picture here of a nonpolar atom, so this could be something like helium, uh, we've got the nucleus in the center and then we've got the electron density distributed evenly and spherically around the nucleus. Now it is possible that the uh, electrons move around and there's motion and we might get this instantaneous uneven electron distribution. So again we've got the nucleus but now the electron density is unevenly distributed and we get this instantaneous dipole. Now if we think about the effect of this on a neighbouring atom we start to understand the attraction as a result of the London dispersion forces. So this weakened temporary dipole can influence the neighbouring atom and induce a dipole in that atom and then we get some attraction between them. So here we have our nonpolar atom but because of this positive charge here, uh, slightly positive, it starts to attract this electron density and we get this induced dipole. And then because this is slightly positive and this is slightly negative, we get attraction between those two atoms or these could be the segments in our SAFT uh, molecule or it could be just nonpolar molecules. So the London dispersion force is a really part, important part of understanding SAFT because it explains the attractive part between the segments. Then we move on to Pauli repulsion. So Pauli repulsion has its origin in the quantum mechanical nature of electrons. So two electrons with the same spin can't occupy the same orbital. And so if atoms start to come close to each other and electrons of the same spin start to sort of overlap in those orbital orbitals, then they push away. That's the explanation from the Pauli um, repulsion and the, and the Pauli principle. But we can also explain this in terms of diminishing electron density at the internuclear region. Uh, this results in uh, reduced screening of the nuclear charges and increased nuclear nuclear uh, columbic repulsion. So if you think back to this picture here, we've got the positive nucleus, the electron density. If two atoms are being squeezed together and the electron density is reducing in this region, then these nuclear, these positive charges on the nucleus here and the positive charge on this nucleus here, they're not uh, shielded as much. We get reduced screening of those and so the positive charges start to repel each other. And so that's a more mechanistic understanding and description of the repulsion between uh, nonpolar molecules or atoms as they approach each other. Okay, so uh, in, in terms of having an equation to describe this attraction and repulsion, one of the very popular uh, approaches is to use the Leonard Jones potential. So this has been uh, proven to be a, a very effective uh, a, equation to describe this and it gets used in a lot of a statistical uh, modeling of, of chemical systems. So here's the equation. We've got U of R, which is the intermolecular potential energy between a pair of neutral atoms or molecules. Then we've got epsilon, which is the depth of the potential well. Epsilon is the distance at which the interparticle potential is zero. And then we've got R, the distance between the particles. And if we plot this out, we get this sort of classical shape here for this Leonard Jones potential. And we've got a repulsion part here where the potential is going up very high, that's not favourable, and so the uh, the two atoms or the two molecules uh, repel each other. And then we've got this attractive part here where the potential is lower than zero, so that's favourable, and we get attraction between the, the pair. Um, so this is one model that we can use to understand that, and we can start to use this equation in our SAFT equations. Another approach has been the square well potential. Again, we've got these parameters, but we've also got lambda, the reduced well width. And um, we can see here that this has been plotted for us. 
So we've got a lambda of 1.5 times sigma here, and this is just a very sort of crude and basic shape that tries to model the Leonard Jones potential. So I've overlaid the Leonard, Leonard Jones potential model there to just show that, and it's a way of making the maths simpler by just having this crude approximation. It shoots up to infinity here to give repulsion, and then there's this short well here for the attractive part, and then we're back to zero potential, so there's no attraction, there's no repulsion here as the molecules get further apart. Another approach has been to use the modified square well potential. Again, we've got these parameters, but in addition, we've got S1. Uh, now, S1 divided by sigma equals 0 0.12 for the PC saft uh, model. And if we plot this out, we get this extra step here. So we've got the square well, we've got it going up and then up to infinity, but we've got this extra step which gives us a more sort of soft repulsion. So instead of it just being a harsh repulsion up to infinity, we get this step and this gets referred to as soft repulsion. Again, if I overlay the Leonard Jones model, you can see how this is trying to follow that more closely. Okay, so in summary, we've looked at the London dispersion forces in terms of what's attracting our segments. We've looked at poorly repulsion in terms of what's repelling the segments. And then we've looked at a number of potential well models that can describe this behavior using equations.